everyone it's Bonita from pennies to dollars and if you've been following my channel for a while you know that I am a farm girl I'm from Kansas I live in a rural area um, I grew up in a town a uh, school that had 25 people in my graduating class my life was way different than a lot of people today can identify with and my parents were born in 1929 and 1931, which made them born right in the beginning of the Depression era. So I was raised very much with their values and the things that they had learned growing up. And it's amazing to me how much they knew back then without social media, without the internet, without anything to teach them these viable skills on managing money. But my parents were the masters of managing money. And when I started comparing some of the things that I learned just from observing them growing up to some of the things that we do now and some of the things that are suggested now to manage your money, I found they were so similar that I just had to share this to show you what insight they had in their day that we can still benefit from if we're not doing those things. So I've come up with 11 things that I remember observing from them that, that they did on a daily basis to manage their money. Number one, they took care of what they had. This is why we have antiques today. This is why we have things that are carried down from generation to generation is because everybody in their era took care of what they had. They repaired what they had. So for instance, if my dad had tools that would get rusty, he would soak them in white vinegar overnight and it would take the rust off of them. If they were really bad, he might have to leave them a few days. And it also will take the rust off of cast iron skillets. They did things like this and learned all of this without the internet and learned how they could make things last and take care of them. They repaired everything that they could he was a master when it came to vehicles, tractors, washing machines, you name it, he could figure it out. And so these are a few of the things that I wanted to share with you. Number two, they, my mom knew how to shop. She compared sales ads for the two stores that were 20 miles away in our town. We had an IGA and we had a Safeway. And she would sit down with those ads that came and she would write down what she was buying at each place. And it was only the sale items that were a really good price, nothing else. And then she made do with what she had to make it until the next sale ad came out. And how many times today do we get told that that's the way to do it? That's the way to shop. And I still shop that way. I shop the sales or the really good clearance items or the markdowns and I add it to what I already have to make that, that next week's meal plan. My dad was the master of conserving energy. If his bill was over $29 a month, we had <laughs> we had hell to pay so we he looked through everything he took his bills as soon as they came in and he sat down and he paid them now how many of us today could do that when they come in the mail how many of us could day could sit down and write a check out and just pay the bill as soon as it comes in no because we are juggling and trying to manage money and we're not able to do that but we did not have so many things that were electric back then. We didn't have toaster ovens and air fryers and crock pots and blenders. We didn't have any of those things. And so it was pretty easy to keep our bill at about $29. We didn't have air conditioning. We would use fans until we fell asleep and then mom would come and shut them off. We did everything we could to conserve our electricity and save money and keep our bills at a low rate that we could manage to make them affordable. And so the third thing was paying the bills when they arrive in the mail. The fourth thing is dad believed in not owing any money. 
dad would not have a credit card. He had one one time and when it came in the mail, he cut it up. And I said, dad, why'd you cut that up? And he said, because I don't want to owe anybody any money. So dad would save his money for big purchases. He would save his money to buy a car. He would go in, haggle with the guy and pay cash and buy a new car. And when it hit 50,000 miles, he would go in, haggle again, buy another new car. And this is with us living on the farm and only having money from wheat and alfalfa. Alpha. We didn't have regular incomes with a regular paycheck. He had to save from harvest to harvest and save up this money to be able to buy new cars and he was still able to do it. So I hope that's an incentive to us today that we can do that. And then they also tracked their expenses. I have this little spiral notebook from my mom from 1948 when she graduated high school. And my parents continued this and she wrote down everything she spent and how much it cost. And I want to share some of that with you today. She has swimming trunks for her brother, 51 cents. She bought some ribbon to sew with, 5 cents. She bought um, a Coke for 10 cents. She bought gum for six cents. She bought an apron for 39 cents. And she kept track of every single penny that they bought. And then they also wrote down when they had any income. Um, here they got down to $13.68 at the end of the month. Postcards were two cents candy at Christmas, 10 cents. She bought her, her sister a birthday present, $1.29. And here they have income of $40. And babysitting, she was paid 50 cents. So she kept track of everything. Every penny mattered. And that's what I say nowadays. If you take care of those pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. And that is very true. Look how many pennies they had. They only had pennies, but they were able to save to buy new cars, save to get parts to repair the tractor, save to buy birthday presents. This is a wonderful, wonderful keepsake of mine that I treasure. Number six, they raised a garden and they sold any extra produce that they could and they canned. And so dad always had a huge garden. We lived a lot in the summer just on garden items like corn on the cob, tomatoes, carrots, radishes, watermelon, cantaloupe. Dad had a wonderful garden and we would have big fields when it wasn't wheat time, we would have big fields of corn and we would go through with bushel baskets, pick the corn, and then we would put it in the back of our pickup and park it by the road and sell it like 10 or 12 for a dollar. I can't remember, but we would sell that entire pickup bed full of extra corn that was too much for us to eat and was an extra way to make some more of those pennies. Number eight, we always had a savings account always had a savings account. Um, there was a savings loan that we would go to 20 miles away. And if we got any birthday money, we didn't go out and spend it. If we got Christmas money, we didn't go out and spend it. We were taught to take that into the savings and loan and deposit it. And we kept those little pass books where they would update it and update your interest. And that was just like gold to you to see that you had money in the savings account that you could actually hold this little book and see that you had money in the savings account. And then when you were done as a child to encourage you to save money, they had a lollipop tree. And every time you made a deposit, you could pick a lollipop from the tree. I, it never occurred to me to go out and spend that money. I was looking forward to taking it in and getting a lollipop from the tree and seeing my little passbook balance grow. Another great incentive to save money. They also kept menus simple. We didn't have Pinterest and Etsy and recipes online. We had the old fashioned recipes that had been passed down and a Betty Crocker cookbook that we got in high school as a Christmas present 
and that was all we had. And mom would have basically the same meals every single day. We knew by what day of the week it was, what meal we were going to have. Either it was like sauerkraut and hot dogs, or beans and cornbread, or chicken and scalloped potatoes was Sunday because that was a big deal after church on Sunday. And that was always fried chicken and scalloped potatoes and homemade hot rolls. So, I mean, every day they had a planned menu on what they had. They didn't rotate. They didn't complain about getting tired of things. This is the way it was. And it didn't need to be your favorite food every day to have nourishment, to have your stomach full, and to have what you needed to survive. People looked at things differently back then. If you fed your kids and you fed your family, you were successful. Nowadays, we look at what are we hungry for, what do we want, what do we feel like, and I feel like a lot of that has came from having so many fast food options. So think about making your meal plan per week more simple. Maybe choose some frugal items that your family loves, like spaghetti, or like macaroni and hot dogs. Think of some frugal items that you can rotate on a weekly basis that your family will love. And do that for a while and see if that helps you manage your money better than always trying new recipes or buying extra things for special meals. We have become a nation where we think that food is an entertainment. And back then food was for nourishment and food was for survival, and it wasn't a big deal. It was meal time, you ate, you went and found something else to do. It wasn't a big event of the day that you had a special meal all of the time, and we didn't have snacks. We didn't have all those in-between things to go and grab that cost extra money in your budget. And then we also used our resources wisely. We only went to the doctor when we were really, really sick after we had tried to treat ourselves at home for a while. We only had liability insurance in case we hit someone with our car or in case somebody got hurt on our land. Um, we tracked all of our expenses, like I said, and dad even tracked his mileage on his vehicle and how much gas he put in his vehicle and how many gallons, and he calculated it every single time that he got gas. These are some tips that do help us. There are ways to make our gas mileage better by the way we drive and different things that we do. There are so many tips that we can gain from the knowledge that they had back then. So I hope this was interesting for you and maybe even helpful and maybe got some of your creative juices going on what we can do now to save money and what we can learn from them to save money. Because when you look at that, a lot of those same suggestions are made today in a lot of the YouTube videos. And this is 2022, not 1929. So you have a great day.